tonight, they've decided to do two things. Number one, share with you their secrets of success, share with you their knowledge and everything they've learned the hard way, number one. And number two, the other thing they've decided to do is bring some of the best speakers and the brightest minds with regard to Amazon on this stage to share their knowledge with you because when you apply that knowledge, that will be the accelerator for your success. Ladies and gentlemen, is it okay if I bring them to the stage? Are you sure? Can you help me welcome them to the stage? Do you remember how we help people to the stage? Get up out of your seats. Put your hands together. Welcome to the stage, Sebastian Swick and Eric Castellano. Oh, come on. We can do better than that. Who's excited to be here? Raise your hand and say aye. Aye. Awesome. Fantastic. Wow. Uh, first of all, anybody from overseas here? Show of hands. Anybody travel from outside the country? Wow. Awesome. Amazing. Amazing. And then another question. Anybody not selling on Amazon yet, and you just heard about this event, and you showed up, or are we all selling on Amazon already? Wow. See, awesome. Awesome. These people are the most important person in this room, so give them a round of applause. <laughs> right? It takes a lot of courage to come out to an event like this and get super uncomfortable and meet new people, especially when you're not even in the industry yet. You know, and, and all of you know what that feels like, because I've known a lot of you for many years, Sebastian, myself, and a lot of you were just meeting, and I'm super grateful that all of you are here with us tonight, because without all of you, this event doesn't exist, right? This community that we created doesn't exist. So give yourself a round of applause for making this happen. Thank you so much. Tonight's a special event, and at the end of the day, it really isn't about Amazon, and it's not about growing the business, it's about the impact. We as entrepreneurs are here to impact our communities, whether it's just our households or the communities that we live in, our families, friends, employees, and that's why we get together. Because in a world that sometimes seems so negative, it's great to be around like-minded people who are growing businesses and aspiring, just aspiring to, to grow. That's why this is Business Growth Hacks Life. It's all about growing. Yeah. That's what this is about. And that's what we're here for, impact and community. Yeah. So we got, a, we got a, a great lineup tonight, some phenomenal speakers, some professionals in the industry that are gonna teach us all things that we can implement immediately into our business. Right, and the way Sebastian and I are gonna start this off, because we're all out here for ASD. How many people went to ASD, right? How many people closed some accounts or at least had some good conversations, keep them hands up? Right? How many people didn't saw, thought ASD was terrible and you, you regret coming? Nobody? Okay. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come talk to me after, during one of the breaks. We'll get you set up. But uh, so this first um, little presentation Sebastian and I put together is all about closing accounts. Right? How to harvest the relationships, grow the relationships, how to communicate with your vendors and distributors so you can elevate to the next level. It's super important. You know, a lot of times I'm, I'm so focused on building new accounts and opening new accounts that I fail to realize that I have a lot of opportunity with the current accounts I'm doing business with right in front of me. You know, so like how about leveraging those? And then when you're finding new accounts, making sure that you're securing those relationships and growing them because it's the most important aspect. It's the same reason we're all out here to meet with these companies in person so they can put a face to the email, a face to the phone call, a face to the name. That's what this is all about. Really, sometimes we get so caught up in numbers, we forget that it's about the relationships, that they're people just like us. And without, this, this isn't an island, so without these other people, whether it's Amazon and seller support, as much as we don't like them, or, or the vendors that we work with, without them, what, even if you're a sole proprietor, you're not working by yourself. You have to surround yourself and network in order to grow. It's, it's, it's the world we live in, right? It's an ecosystem, and that's what this is all about. We're gonna be covering all of that in great detail, kind of going through the whole process of how we build that out, build those relationships, and how, how to grow your business on Amazon at the end of the day. Yeah. So what, what it all boils down, a Amazon Wholesale is a numbers game, right? It's, it's all about analyzing a lot of products and then throwing stuff at the wall, which is into Amazon, and seeing if it sticks. And if it sticks, you replenish it and you keep selling it, right? And if it doesn't, you stop selling it and you move on. So it's, it's all about the numbers. And those who are persistent will really be able to level up, right? If you wanna take a couple weeks off, a couple months off, or not build teams around your business, then you're gonna have a lot of trouble growing.
right? And that's okay for some people. Some people don't want to build massive Amazon businesses. I'm not here to teach people that you have to build a massive Amazon business. I'm teaching you, we're teaching you how to do it efficiently and effectively and to build teams around it so you're not running around like a crazy person. Because I know what that's like, running around, you're busy, working 18 hour days, seven days a week, you got no time for family, you're not even feeding yourself sometimes because you're just so busy with all the tasks you have to complete. Yeah, you, you need to delegate. And I love what Devon said, tenacity. It's about consistency and persistence. That's it, being persistent. We've had multiple failures. We've had multiple no's in our life, but we go back, we try again, and we continue to go to these brands, go to these suppliers, go to these vendors until we hear what we expect to hear, a yeah. yes. And that's why we travel. We travel so we can network because our largest accounts, our largest suppliers, are not people that we actually met directly at these network events, but we met indirectly through people that we met at shows like ASD, at shows like Expo West, and other trade shows, and other networking events and masterminds that we attend. Yeah, and, and self-doubt self -doubt is, is, is definitely real and alive in all of us. You know, I get messages all the time, whether it's on social media or text messages. It's like, Eric, I can't find any, any suppliers. I can't find any profitable products. My vendors are always out of stock, right? And that consistent negative mindset doesn't help you do anything positive in your life, right? Saying that I, I can never or I can't, it's just, it's super negative. It doesn't serve you, it doesn't serve me. So I personally try to eliminate all that negative self-talk in my, in my life. Right, because every day, close to 60,000 thoughts bounce around in our head. You know, and like, if, if a lot of those are negative, then your day will turn out negative, right? And your relationships will turn out negative. And your outlook on life will turn out negative. So I try to stay as positive as possible, as frequently as possible, and implement that same lifestyle into all aspects of my life. When I'm sitting in traffic, right? That's huge for me. I could while out, <laughs> right? <laughs> sitting in traffic, when I'm hanging out with my family. Sometimes family, I love you guys, but sometimes family is the hardest to get along with sometimes, right? Friends, at work especially. So keeping positive is like a huge, huge aspect of my life and I attribute a lot of my success to it and Sebastian as well. Yeah, I really monitor the people that I'm around and the situations that I try to harvest because at the end of the day, I don't wanna get caught up in the petty. I was just talking to Trish last night and we were talking about the excuses. We were talking about some of the excuses that we hear from others and we don't tolerate it. You know, a lot of you know Eric's story. In the beginning when uh, we started this whole Amazon thing, for the first two years, I didn't have a car. I, when I finally got my first warehouse, I decided to get the warehouse before getting a car and I would walk the mile down to the warehouse where it was thousand square feet because I had one objective, give myself some hope. It wasn't even growing the business, it was giving myself some hope. And those sales that were coming in was that glimmer of hope. So we just don't tolerate it. Yeah. And, and through that process, you're definitely going to feel overwhelmed. You know, how many people have felt super overwhelmed in their business? Yeah. Right? So you're not alone. It's okay to feel overwhelmed. Right? It's okay to feel like that. The beautiful thing about feelings is they're, they're real, but they're not forever. Mm. So you can feel super overwhelmed in a moment in time, and then 10 minutes later you could be sad or happy, and that it's a fleeting thought, right? It passes. But when you're living in that moment, dealing with that stress of being overwhelmed, it's, sometimes it's like you feel like you just can't break free, right? And it's challenging. And some ways I, I combat that is like prayer, meditation, you know, reading, surrounding myself with all of you, knowing that I can reach out to anybody and just get my mind off what I'm thinking about. The reason I know that emotions aren't real and these feelings aren't real is because how many of you have not wanted to go to the gym and had ended up getting off the couch and felt better after going, even though your mind told you not to go? So I know it's all about taking action. You know, a lot of times I could look back and logically try to look at what I did yesterday if it was positive and repeat that even though my mind might play tricks on me and say I need to rest today or I, I need to watch my, my favorite show on Netflix, you know, because White Boy, White Boy Rick is pretty solid uh, documentary. <laughs> But, but I got things to do. I got, I got employees to take care of and family to take care of. And so I got to monitor myself and check myself. And at the end of the day, I like to pause and write down, you know, a little bit about what I did today, what I accomplished today, 
what I went through in that day. And I don't do it every day, but when I do, I do look back at it and I find that that helps me see that I'm moving in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. And the person you are today is not going to be able to be the same person that operates your business six months from now, 18 months from now, 24 months from now. You're going to have to have an entire mental shift to be able to be that person. Right? And it's going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight. And Sebastian, at the end of the day, we're just two regular guys. Yeah. There's nothing special about us. We just made a commitment in our lives that we were going to change our lives and go to any lengths to make that possible. And we do not sell ourselves short. Every day I wake up and I tell myself that this is what I'm going to do. And there's no exceptions about it. Obviously, the day happens and things go wrong, but you get back on track. You know, and it's a beautiful thing about life. You can literally restart over at any minute, any second, any hour of the day. You can completely change your entire perspective. But it's up to you. It's your responsibility. I can't do it for you. I can show you how I do it, but I cannot do it for you. You know, so it's about recognizing it and making those changes. So much of being an entrepreneur is not just about business. It's about mind, body, and spirit. And once you start focusing on that, I guarantee you, you will be able to accomplish anything that you want to accomplish in life. I promise you that. It really is about the mindset. That's, that's all it is. At the end of the day, the first day is the hardest. And then you take action. And what happens when you take action on a daily basis, you build habits. And once you build those habits and they become daily, you build character. And that character becomes who you are, just like an actor in a movie. You could switch roles in your life. Yeah. So, so let's get into some Amazon stuff right now, right? So the supplier tells you they don't have an Excel sheet. We all know those suppliers, right? Raise your hand if you dealt with one of those suppliers, right? I get, I get them in the Facebook group all the time. Like, Eric, the supplier doesn't have an Excel sheet. What do I do? I can't use, you know, Scan Unlimited or Source Correct. And it's like, put in the work, you know? Sometimes those are the best suppliers. Don't sell yourself short. Even if you got to get a VA to sort the data for you, Put in the work because 99% of these people are thinking the same thing you are. It's too much work, so they pass on it. So that's where all the nuggets are. We're in one marketplace, right, from a majority of us. There's thousands of competitors in this marketplace. We're all trying to do the same type of system, the wholesale model. So what differentiates someone like Eric, myself, from somebody that quit or is thinking about quitting is the fact that we stay persistent. The fact that we take that PDF and we go to work. I mean, there's times where at three o'clock in the morning, we're still in the office working at this time right now, where we are in our business, because we know that you need to continue to train, you need to continue, the best, the professionals that, you, you, that I look up to, the Michael Jordans, they continue to train throughout their career. That doesn't change. So we understand, we kind of follow and replicate the model that the, the road that they paid for us. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you start placing some orders with those vendors who have the crazy PDF files and a couple months later an Excel file appears <laughs> out of nowhere. Yeah. You know, you're like, you guys had this the whole time? And they're like, yeah, but we don't know you. Right. We don't right. trust you. You're a new business person. We don't, we've never done business with you before. Why should we give you our golden nuggets? You haven't right. even spent any money with us yet. Right. And there's thousands of Amazon sellers who are reaching out to them, asking them questions, asking them for Excel sheets, and then never do anything with it. Yeah. They never do anything with it. So how do they know you're going to be any different? You have to prove yourself. And c communication is key with all these vendors, right? Like understanding their purchase order requirements and keeping an open line of communication about discrepancy reports. That's what's really going to allow you to harvest and grow those relationships to the next level. I appreciate y'all. Stay lit. And don't go home because after this, we're going to be celebrating all of you with awards.